Welcome to SelfDiscoveryWisdom.com, formerly known as Self Discovery Media. On these podcasts, you're going to hear people who speak from the heart. They've taken the journey in life. Many things have happened to them, but they've changed it to happening for them. And in their strength, their courage, they've discovered their abilities and their wisdom, and they are now sharing it here with you. Do enjoy each show. We bring it to you with love and knowing that it's going to help you on your journey of life. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Building Your Business right here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Kenny Perry. And we're going to be talking about the organic mindset. Well, what is that organic mindset? How does it involve business? I think all business should have an organic mindset. He says his motto is growing your business in all in all your mind, focusing on your business to take care of your marketing needs. Well, he is a marketing guru, but he approaches it from a totally different way. And in this podcast episode, we're going to talk about why business owners should hire a digital marketing agency to assist with their branding, marketing, and promotional needs. We're going to dive into the deep uh, to ensure that the audience knows that business owners have a clear and concise way of working with a marketing agency. What to ask? What do you need? come with a little bit of a plan. And he will explain why every business owner should hire a market agency that will help them grow their business. He is the founder of Organic Mindset Agency, a comprehensive digital marketing agency headquartered in Toronto, Ontario, uh, Wilmington, Delaware. And he's dedicated his career to helping business unlock their full potential. Their agency takes a strategic approach to marketing, offering a broad spectrum of services, including CEO, online ads, social media growth, branding, website development, and revision. They pride themselves in their efficiency in delivering completed websites in 21 days or less, a key strength to their business, and the acceptance of the Organic Mindset Agency was driven by the desire to connect with business owners and show that they're maximizing their marketing objectives. So what are the uh, objectives and how do we know what we need? And I think that is a big, huge problem that many people have in business. They have an idea. I want to do this. I want to make a business out of it. And they may be extremely good in one area of their life, but that doesn't mean they've got all the hats. And sometimes you really have to pass a hat off to the experts because they know what you're doing. You've got your business. You're ready to go. How do you let people know what you've got? Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on the show, Sarah. You know, it's an honor to be on the show and, you know, I'm really looking forward to the, to this interview and, you know, dive into the world of marketing. So thank you. Thank you very much. A lot of people look at marketing and, and it, you know, because, ah! <laughs> because it, it's forever changing with social media, with AI, with algorithms and everything else. And it's so hard for anybody to kind of keep up with it. Never mind, you know, kind of the layman that it's not their forte. But quite honestly, you can't run a business without good marketing behind you. Otherwise, you know, how is anybody going to know who you are and what you have to offer? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with that. And, you know, our goal at Organic Mindset Agency is we like to not only, you know, provide top-notch services, but really educate the client to really get a clear understanding of, you know, one, why they need marketing. Two, understand what they do. Because I find a lot of the time when I, when I deal with clients or I'm prospecting and I, you know, connect with someone, they, a lot of the time, will explain their issues, but they don't actually know what the solutions are. So I feel that listening and getting a clear, concise understanding of what it is that they need, putting that all into, you know, pretty much into a strategy, proposing, basically going ahead and proposing it to them, that pretty much gives them the comfort level to be like, okay, you know what, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, I want to work with you, et cetera. So that's, that's pretty much what I like to do in that approach. I find it's just really, really getting a clear understanding of what they do and putting the right strategy together that's going to make them maximize their their overall uh, potential get an ROI. And also, you don't want anybody, you know, marketing themselves at a level where it's uh, too much growth too fast or, or marketing, obviously, to the wrong people. And, and very often, you know, people 
don't know what their niche market is, you know, don't know where they kind of want to start off. You know, they want to maybe start off slowly and kind of build up. But if they kind of do too much marketing, all of a sudden they're inundated and they're not ready for the growth or they're hitting the wrong market. So, you know, you said the big, big word here, listening, listening to what the client has. You know, you can gather what they need from there, but very often they're going to come, I need this, I need that. No, don't come with what you need. Come with what you've got because you can see what it is they need. Absolutely. And and that's that's something actually I, my, my dad has always said about, he's like, your generation doesn't listen. You don't pay attention to details. So it's something I really prided myself on. <laughs> and I feel that... <laughs> I've got three I millennials. <laughs> I feel that, you know, when it comes to, you know, really getting an understanding of what the prospective client needs, you really have to almost put yourself in the shoes of a doctor, you know, mm. as a doctor, I can't prescribe something to you if I don't know what the issue is. So if I come on a call and I'm not listening to get an understanding of what they do, what they need assistance with, and I'm just going ahead and, you know, pushing products and pushing products, pushing products and services, you know, it, it could be, you know, detrimental in the sense where, you know, you can kill the sale, kill the relationship, but having a clear, concise understanding of, you know, what is their pain points, what it is they need and put in the right strategy together based off of their niche, where their audience is and everything like that. Because a lot of the time I like to ask my prospective clients is, you know, who is your niche audience? How do you want to connect with them? How do you connect with them? What works? What doesn't work? So, you know, you get an understanding of these things and then you can start to really brainstorm in your mind during the call to put the right strategies together. There is no one size fits all. So if somebody says everybody, no, there, mm -hmm. there is always a target market. And if it kind of ripples effect out to have an avenue is great, but kind of target the core of your people, the core of who your client is. And then, you know, other people may say, I want those services too. But, you know, we're inclined mm -hmm. to, we're, you know, especially with small business, well, anybody can have this, but, you know, whom should be the person that's at the top? that you're going to target. You know, we we best form of advertising is picket fence, um, old English saying, where, you know, everybody's starting to talk about it, right? So if you can go after a core of people that that's who your target market is, they're going to talk about your services or whatever it is that you have. Don't try and blanket and please everyone, right? Because you're going to exactly. lose people in the net along the way. Exactly, exactly. And that's important because a lot of the time, you know, for, especially for startup businesses, it's, mm -hmm. it's, they, you're, you're so eager and hungry to serve everybody, right? But you're, you're trying, you really pretty much lose track of, you know, your why, your overall why. And, and, and as a business owner and, you know, people that are trying to figure out, you know, their way and what works, what doesn't work, you really, really, before you really get started, is understand your why. Because when you understand your why, that gives you a really, really, concise understanding where you can be efficient because you're like, you know, okay, you have your why you have your understand, you pretty much understand as your purpose as to why you're doing what you're doing. And then once your why is established, then you can start to branch off and figure out, okay, this is a niche I want to target that, you know, this is my audience, you know, this is the route that I want to go in terms of my marketing to make sure that I'm getting my outreach out there. Mm. With these are called the why shows that I do, exactly. because if we understand why you do what you do, Right, the passion behind it, the commit, uh, commitment behind it. Uh, why, and what brought you to this? Why? Why is it so important to you? And whom do you serve? You know, if I say in business all the time, no one is going to do business with you until they've bought you. And if mm -hmm. they've bought you, they like you, they like who you are, what it is you offer, but they like you as a person. I relate, I feel there's a relationship here, I can trust you. Then they're going to be more inclined to know what you want to do and do business with you. But we've seen so much. And I don't, if you remember, flash, flash, flash on all the sites. Oh, God, so irritating. And it put people off so much that they just didn't bother following through. And you've still got people doing that in marketing where it's money first. All right, I'm going to make you seven figures, uh, 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 make you a millionaire in a day. Blah, 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 blah. And, it's, and it's like, but where's the relationship in there? because there's immediate distrust around it. So how does somebody in through marketing build up a trust factor where somebody really does want to know who they are and what they do? Absolutely. That's a great question, actually. And there's several different ways that I can answer that question. I would say, you know, and for my own agency, when it comes to me building the trust is I really dive deep into 
you know, understanding what the company does, understanding, you know, their mission, you know, the overview. I mean, this, this is free knowledge information that you get just going to the site, you know, and then being organic in the sense of, you know, no pun intended because it's a name title. So no pun intended, but, <laughs> well, no, yeah, no. Be- <laughs> I love the organic. It just means you're really at, down at the root and the core of something and not the facade. Yes. I love it. Well, there, well, there you go. So getting into the root of the core of, of the, the entire, you know, under, pretty much what makes them tick. So really getting into that. So really diving into, you know, ha- building a relatable relationship with them. So like, you know, when you, when you have a conversation with someone and you started off, whether it's, you know, the weather or you're talking about, you know, sports or, you know, stuff that's happening in the news, you know, you're slowly, especially when it comes off of somebody you're first connecting with, brings that guard down a little bit to therefore, you know, it loosens up the conversation. You know, you can read body language, you can really get an understanding and really, be as transparent as possible when it comes to, you know, okay, this, this is, you know, what to look out for. I like the positives and the negatives because I feel that you have way too many business owners out there in several different industries, not just business owners, you know, sales consultants, you know, people that are working in several different industries that come in with the approach of over-promising and under under delivering. And what that does is Uh it completely just destroys the relationship. You know, you lose credibility. And on top of that, you're not building that, organic approach again no pun intended but mm-hmm. organic approach when it comes to the there's client. a reason why you called it that <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely so you have to have the mindset once again no pun intended mm-hmm. <laughs> the mindset of you know building a connection that's that's that people can really relate to and understand because in order for someone to buy from your business or to buy from your product they have to buy you first so absolutely. if absolutely. you build that approach then, you know, sky's the limit after that. So I find that a lot of business owners that are really struggling in the beginning to find that, find their, their way is really make sure that you're able to sell yourself first. The Mm. business comes after. A hundred trillion percent. Absolutely. I mean, I've been doing this nearly 12 years and I don't know how many business people I've interviewed and it is all about your organic self. Right. And one of the biggest gifts that you can give your client is your time and attention. Yeah, and if you've given absolutely. somebody time and attention to truly listen and then speak back to what you've listened to in the form of questions, the form of inquiry, they go, this person's really engaged. This person's really interested in what I have to say. Their eyes aren't diverting this way, that way. Oh, God, too long. Next. You know, and that's we've seen that too much in society where people aren't investing time in people and they just feel their number. And if they haven't yeah. got what that person's interest is, whoop swipe to the left or the right and then on with the next one the greatest gift you can give someone is that time of listening paying attention to what they need and you know a 15 minute um a meeting suddenly is an hour they gave me an hour right and they gave they invested their time in me you know the old adage time is money well time is everything that's all we have every single one of us is has time when we invest our time in a client where we say i'm truly interested i'm giving my time then that person really feels invested in and i think it's the same approach that they need to bring to the all business no absolutely i I totally agree with you absolutely i want to talk about websites because what i do when i'm going to interview somebody is i like to look at their website first Mm -hmm. And, you know, some websites are very nice and clean and very well designed and I read them and then I get to interview them or talk to them and I go, hang on, Uh, there's none of you here. (laughs) You've hired someone to do your website in a generic latest fashion look, but where is you? I don't see the personalization. I don't feel the connection. I want to go to a site and see what you do. Yes, but I want to feel what you do. And if I don't get that feeling coming across, it's like, well, why do I want to interview you? Or when I do, or get to speak to them, this is the misconnection here. So a site <clears throat> is your calling card. It's that Absolutely. first invitation. So again, it has to be organic, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love you keep throwing the word organic. Out. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, it, it's nice promotion at the same time. Right? It's nice promotion at the same exactly. time. So. Marketing away like that. <laughs> but I mean, absolutely. that's what we are talking about. You know, authenticity is organicness. You know, being true to who you are coming from the core. That is what organic is. No, you know, preservatives, no nothing else. It's, it's just being purely who you are and you're enough. And we want that 
organic approach in business, but we want to represent our clientele in an organic way. And I think there's an awful lot of pull for people. You've got to have this bell and whistle. You've got to look like this. You've got to be this. This is the latest style. You've got to, got to, got to. And they lose themselves, that organicness in, in along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. So, you know, that that's, again, a really, really good question. And I'm going to dive pretty deep in this in a mm -hmm. pretty, you know, in-depth way right now when it comes to the website route. So websites are one of our more premium products, actually, that I would say that a lot of clients come across us and they really, really want to work with us because one, we really go ahead and dissect the website from start to finish. So like my team and I, like we look at the website, we really look at where it can improve the aesthetic look because aesthetic is the one part of the website that a lot of people sometimes overlook. They, you know, they just kind of throw something together. It's like to have a site, to have a site. And then they use, they rely more on social media to, to you know, market themselves. Okay. We're going to pretty much divide this is your website is like your brick and mortar location. Mm -hmm. This is where people walk inside and they want to look around, see what you do. You know, if it's all, I'll compare it to a shoe store. They want to walk around. They want to look at the shoes. They want to go from aisle to aisle. They want to look at, okay, whether you have Nikes on this side, whether you have Ugg boots on that side, whether you have New Balances here, Adidas, whatever it is, running shoes. And you're able to really decipher, okay, you know, for example, I use, I use sneakers, for example, because I, I really love footwear. So Adidas Boost <laughs> is a really comfortable you know, more premium product that Adidas has when it comes to that, uh, pretty much like the everyday look or like when it comes to performance base, you know, Nike has, you know, the the Zoom Air, which is, you know, really light and things along those lines. So, you know, getting back to the website, it's really, really important to have, you know, whether it's a portfolio on there, whether it's testimonials on there, whether it's, you know, highlighting why your products are good, why your products can help someone. But you don't want to make it too wordy because going back to the millennial state of mind, if you have too many words on there, a lot of millennials or people will just kind of back off. There's too much text on there. So you got to have a very, very good aesthetic balance between visuals, motion graphics, and text. Those all have to be balancing each other out in terms of having a nice optimized website. Another thing that gets overlooked a lot that we talk about pretty much every single day when it comes to calls is – Having a mobile optimized site. Now, what's extremely crucial about the, the mobile optimized sites are really focusing on how they look on mobile devices. Because let's be honest, the majority of us are on the go, we're on our phones, we're on our you know iPads, tablets, whether it's Samsung tablet, whatever it is. We're looking at websites. If the website it looks janky, it looks off. If it looks kind of you know shrunken in, you know all the graphics aren't loaded properly. Your site's going to be a Passover site, and you're not going to get someone that's going to want to fill out an intake form or to actually, you know, get, you know, something of value. Call to action. Your call to action has to be strong as well. So when it comes to call to action, you know, having something on there for a call to action that's going to actually keep people engaged and coming to your site is also very important. But those are some of the key components that get really overlooked when it comes to that. And then also from a security point of view, you want to make sure your site is SSL cert encrypted because if it's not, then you know you, you can run into a whole bunch of other issues but those are some of the components the mobile optimization i feel is one of the most important components that gets really really overlooked a lot when it comes to the website so that's something that i wanted to you know really really mention and stress because we look at websites on a consistent basis and mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> we don't like to leave blank spaces on there whether it's a blank white space a blank blue space whatever some type of graphics motion it keeps the customer engaged and actually wants to learn more about your business I'm a true tied to your coach. branding as well Right, exactly. I'm a true colors coach. And that is okay. the four key personality traits. And we have four key personalities. There's always one that is high and then everything else. And, and then maybe a second one. Mine happens to be sky blue and then kind of orange green. And my gold, which is the kind of the building blocks, um, mm -hmm. is, is way down there. And through doing this, I've had to kind of bring those building blocks up but that yeah. is the, the the point that we need on a website you want to be able to address all those personalities every single personality trait that comes to your site there has to be something for them so on my site even though it's an old-fashioned template and i've tried to change it a few times and hired people to do it and they have not listened and they have come up with something that is unfunctional, completely mm. misconstruing and just try to put me into a vision of what they want to do, not listening to what I wanted. Because I'm a very visual person, very colorful person. All my show banners, each one of them is a graphic. 
representing kind of the topic of the show genre. And I've got 19 of yeah. them there. So you're always going to see a lot of graphics. And one of the problems I have, I'm wordy. AI, thank you. I can take my long text, give it up to AI and say, shorten, concise it for me, right? And then now mm -hmm. I've got something that is encapsulating everything I want to say, but in a paragraph and not in three, right? So there's ways of doing things. But there are some people that want to read the content. Well, okay, a pretty pictures, or I can hear this, but I want to read it. So we've got to address the person that wants to know the details. We've got to address the visual person, the person that wants to, to hear it or see it on a video you know, the call to action. All of those things are very, very important. And if you're not addressing that on a website, you're not addressing everybody. And don't assume that your clientele, just because they may be an analytical person, and you might be a spiritual person, that the analytical isn't for you. No, the analytical is seeking out their spirituality and they want to know why they should go there. So you've got to have something that's going to entice them over there as an invitation. Inspiration begets invitation. If your site is inspiring or the content is inspiring, it's an invite for them to go further with you. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, but you've I got totally to be true to who that. you are, though. And that's, again, coming back exactly. to that organic mindset, that spending that time with someone, understanding who they are, what their why is, whom are they presenting to, more yeah. than what. It's who and why, because that who and why is the invitation. I, I absolutely agree. Totally. No, that makes total sense. And it's, you know, you have to, you have, you have to make sure your site speaks the language of who your business is. Yes. So slogans, because like, you know, I'm a branding specialist, so I really pay very close attention to branding. So, you know, when I'm having my consultation calls, again, listening is the main component mm -hmm. of it. I like to listen and really get a clear understanding as what is they're looking for, what does they need. But, you know, from the listening point of view, I want to make sure that, you know, if they need assistance with their branding, we're creating a catchy slogan. We're creating, you know, a tagline that's really going to captivate their audience and want to have their audience really, you know, lock in it to, to find more about the product, you know, so that way if they're doing a newsletter or something like that, they can really, really, you know, continue to keep their audience being really engaged into, you know, things that are happening on, on the side of the, of the business. So I find it's extremely important, you know, color schemes also should yes. tell the story mm -hmm. and the logos as well. Like, you know what I mean? It's even if you have a self, like if I had, you know, Kenny Perry consultant, for example, and I just, that was a self-titled name. Please believe I'm going to have a very, very, very unique logo as well as a tagline as well, because I'm going to make sure that it stands out amongst the pack. And um, represents you. A hundred percent. Right Now, you know, for me and in podcasting, if somebody wants to go to a, a drier podcaster and not so flamboyant, <laughs> then welcome. You know, but this is, you know, uh, when people look at my site or listen or, or do any of the things there, they're going to know they're going to get this colorful person because, you know, that's yeah. who I am. If you don't yeah. want that kind of thing, you're not going to come to me. Right. That's the point. You know, you can't please everyone. There is no one size that fits all. Be true to who you are, because that is the invitation. And last thing you want is when somebody connects with you and you go, uh-uh, uh-uh, I see all of this, but you don't match it. Right. It throws people off. And you if that consistency, whether you're in business or in friendship or meeting somebody, a perfect stranger in a lineup somewhere, the consistency of who you are should always be there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that actually dives into something else I wanted to mention as well, actually. So there's in business, one thing I've realized, especially is there's two different types of, you know, business owners or the way businesses are run. You have the business owners that really want to be the face. They want to be in front. And, you know, when you think of that business, you think of that person. Then on the flip side, you have the oh, business, bro. you have the individuals <laughs> that kind of chill in the background and they just promote the business. So it's almost like, comparing you know spider-man for example well the younger generation is miles morales and uh you know young older generations is peter parker so you know for example for myself kenny perry is just an everyday individual organic mindset agency is who i transform into mm -hmm. so therefore i don't really put my face on there to check social medias and you know things along those lines because i like to promote the brand more than myself Mm -hmm. therefore we get into a call they're like oh so you're the person behind it because i like to really push the brand instead of myself now it works effectively in different ways for different people some people want to be the face they want to be constantly putting a face in the camera and whatnot where i'm more of the in the background more visionary in the sense where i really want to promote the business as opposed to myself because i feel that from a branding aspect it's more effective for what i'm doing personally mm -hmm. but again 
it's different. It, like the way people handled the way that they pulled their business is totally up to them. But that's just something I found has been effective for, you know, organic mindset agency. And it's a question you can do both, but in different places. You know, anything to do with business on my social media has my logo. You know, yeah. first thing you're going to see, self-discovery wisdom, you know, self-discovery, yeah. you know, battle wisdom. Yeah. It's going to be there on my actual Facebook. It's my face. LinkedIn, mm-hmm. they go faces rather than logo. That's fine. You are the Absolutely. business, right? But then my logo banner is behind there for you to identify with who I am and what I'm doing. And, and again, it's like um, you you can do both. Uh, it is all about the people that I interview, but I'm interviewing them. So again, somebody's yeah. got to trust the style that I, in which that I do it in. So know where your platform is when it's you that needs to step up and be your business or whether your business can step up and it can stand alone. And that's yeah. paying attention. And that's the thing. Social media is kind of the marketing platform nowadays. It's, it's what you bring to the social media is what's going to be your marketing. But social media is changing every five minutes. And so it's... All the time. You've got to have somebody that's ahead, step ahead, or at least on par with it, that you know can remind you. Okay, the algorithm has changed, or this has changed. You know, this is what we're going to do now. No, don't bother with that platform. It's too tinsely or too flashy. You know, this is the platform that you need to nurture. And I've I had somebody once send me um, for their for their show. There were sixteen different social media platforms that you wanted me to put up. And I say choose wow. three, choose three, yeah. right? Choose three, maybe four. You know, I'm yeah. I'm on Facebook and uh, LinkedIn are my interactive ones, and you know, um, Instagram and Twitter are my you know promotional platforms and Pinterest. But which ones are you going to be engaged in? It's all very well marketing yourself on them, but which platforms are you going to be engaged in? where you're engaged in other people's work and start the conversation so connections can be made. It isn't all about just posting, is it? No, not at all. Not at all. It's not all about posting. It's, you got you got to engage at the same time, right? So whether it's, you know, DMs, whether it's, you know, doing some type of contest that's going to be, you know, engaging the people like, hey, you know, someone, you know, answers this question and all of a sudden they'll get, you know, a free marketing report, something along those lines, right? Where you're really engaging with them. But I mean, it depends how effective you are with your posting too, right? I mean, there's what we try to do is you try to post a lot of informational stuff on a consistent basis where it's like, you know, why you need an optimized website, you know, why working with an agency is good, why SEO is good, and then be as transparent as possible about it because when you really educate, even not only just from a marketing point of view, even things along the lines as you know, posting stuff about how to properly network, because I feel that's a really lost art because a lot of the time when people network, they don't really network for the right reasons because Mm. they look Mm -hmm. at every person they meet as an actual potential transaction. But you really have to know how to, one, connect with people, two, you know, build relationships and rapport. So it's like quick check-ins, whether it's in-person coffee, virtual coffee, you know, cultivate the relationships to actually build them into something where you can actually have a strategic partner as well. So that's, that's something as well that gets really, really look overlooked a lot when it comes to the world um, of networking. Social, uh, you know, uh, uh, solopreneurs or small entrepreneurs, they're so busy working in their business. They don't realize that there's the, the working on where you need to put an amount a certain amount of time a week I do every day that is just purely for interaction on social media, right? Yeah. Interacting on other people has been invitational. I don't like intrusive DMs, et cetera. If you come to me and say, I am doing this, are you interested? And I can decline or say yes, I want to know more. But people that come in with the forceful, you know, sign up now, does that, we, we're all over the push push. Right. Absolutely. If you're going to come at us with push, push, and you've got to now and forceful, uh, uh-uh, it's tasteless. Always come with an invitation. Always give reason for somebody to pay attention to you. All right. And and what is it that you're offering that person that they're actually this is intriguing. I'd like to know more. So that exactly. means you've really got to look at how you're going to market yourself. You know, come from that personal approach and not like um using the same tag on every single social media and forcing yourself on people exactly exactly and i I feel the exact same way too because you know the amount of dms i get that has a life-changing product every (laughs) everything everything i receive when it comes to messages is life-changing oh i have a life-changing opportunity oh i have something oh you need more leads it's 
consistently like try to build the rapport first, but like just coming like, and it's just like delete, 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 exactly. delete, delete, delete. You don't even want it's to entertain just, it. No. A hundred percent. It's too much. But instead, like, you know, I'm, I'm on a few things. So I'll start, I respond to somebody else's post and I'll say something. If they respond back, uh, what do you do? Now is the time for me to present. Or, you yeah. know, what I do is that uh, when I see a conversation and a friend and I know we've done a show for that and say, I've done a show around this topic, maybe it'll interest you and I'll share the link. Yeah. Right. Now, the thing is, again, it's, it's you um, fishing. Yes. Right. But you just don't want to be intrusive. You gain want to be invitational. And I think we've got into a world where everything is like in your face, in your face. How can yeah. you be in someone's presence without being up their nose? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And also, too, uh, when it comes back to networking properly, it's like when I meet someone and it's like if I'm thinking in my head because I'm always thinking, OK, maybe I know someone that I can refer somebody to. And then obviously, you know, if it turns into a, tra a transaction, great. If it doesn't, then, you know, at least it's another relationship being built. Right. So what I found has been really effective for me is, you know, when I meet someone that does something very interesting, you know, whether it's in person or whether it's through, you know, online networking, I ask them to send me an email explaining in their words how they want to be introduced, because I feel when it comes to referrals, a lot of people don't properly understand what yes. the person they are referring is doing. And yep. then when they send an email to someone introducing them or a LinkedIn connection or whatever it is, they completely botch the introduction. And then it just sometimes it doesn't come off the greatest. So that's why that's I right. ask it. And then yep. I, I store it away in, 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 in an inbox, an inbox folder. And it makes it a lot easier. And it's just simple. Even You can even put it in a, in a system where you can copy and paste the email. Yeah. So your introductions are really concise and they really give a clear understanding of okay this is why i'm introducing this person so that that that's something i f found it's when it comes to the role of network is really important is to be able to properly introduce you know whoever it is you're trying to refer thank you <laughs> i mean i don't come across too many people your age that still do email and you, you know if i say to people i might in in a in a dm message on facebook or on linkedin introduce people yeah. if i see that connection but i always say to people if they make a connection for me for any social medias or anything um please email me because with the yeah. email i've got a track record i've got something to fall back absolutely on, right yeah i also can address more um and and, and investigate more uh and one of the things my pet peeves and i do have a friend who does this she lives on the phone so everything is done through whatsapp and there's mm -hmm. this long strain of conversation and it's like you can't even kind of open it up broad to see who's saying what and it's uh, a yeah. and she'll put all her links in there and that means i can't really extract these links heavily and all i'm being is ding ding dinged all the time because the conversation seems to be 24 7. and i yeah. just i keep saying to her she sends me stuff email or, or DM me something yeah. I can extract from the computer that I can then put into a file or follow through on. I don't live on the phone. And, you yeah. know, that that is something is, um, you know, some people really love the phone. That's your style. But you've got to also honor p other people's styles as well. Right. Yeah, and, absolutely. and the importance of email, as you said, is you can take that database and form a file on that person where you can follow through or you can at least go back into your email, put their name and it will come back up again that will remind you of the conversation. Whereas exactly. if you're trying to do it on social media or a DM, you're strolling up like, when did they contact me? And enough and up it goes. And yeah. it's, it's, um, I don't find it very professional personally. So I agree. Thank you. Thank you for doing <laughs> the emails. <laughs> Cause I know they're trying to make email obsolete, but I don't think it should be. Um, I, I, think it's, I think it's really important. Um, let's actually look at the, you know, the things like WhatsApp and um, TikTok and things like this, you know, um, yeah, you've got to go on TikTok because you'll get the million followers, but it's like, should you, you know, it should some business just because it's the trend and this and that. Uh, uh, I don't think that my kind of content is really for TikTok because it seems to be, you know, frivolous in my mind. Sorry, age speaking. Yeah, uh, it's titillating <laughs> and it's fun, but I don't see it as a business avenue. Um, you know, when we are choosing avenues, it should, you know, I know many people think, well, I've got to be on there because that's where all the followers are. What kind of followers are they? And would they actually end up being your clientele? So we do have to look at where we're going 
with our marketing back to the beginning of the targeting, don't get kind of caught up in all of the areas, you know, that are saying you've got to be on there. This is where the followers are. Is it where your people are? Yeah, well, for myself personally, um, like, or we're not on it. We're not on TikTok uh, because one, I don't feel personally it would be effective for what, you know, I'm doing. Like we're right. really focused on, I would say, you know, Facebook business and Instagram, WhatsApp business are very, very active on there as well. But for TikTok, for example, like I, I just, I'm not the type of person that would be dancing across the screen, like, you know, giving marketing tips. It's just exactly. not my personality. Yeah. I mean, if, for people that do it and it works effective, they're yeah. generating okay. revenue from it. Amazing. Like, you know, I, I commend people that are doing it, but for myself personally, it's just not something that I generally do. Yeah. You've got it. You've got yeah. to know, you don't get become a slave to, oh, but this is the trend. You've got to do it. If you're yeah. not comfortable doing it and if you feel you can't represent yourself there, then don't do it. But that doesn't Agreed. mean, well, I don't like social media, so I'm not going to do it. No, if you want to market yourself, you have to do a certain extent of social media. But 100%. find the ones where you can be comfortable. Yeah. And don't just post, look to interact. Exactly. Exactly. I, I agree with you there, 1,000%. Now, somebody starting off, they're a solopreneur, maybe one or two mm -hmm. people, um, and they have a, a small budget to get going on. But they know that it's very, very pivotal that this this entry into business yeah. and the marketing is very, very important. What are some of the most important things that somebody has to start off with? Absolutely. Like that's one. a really, okay. <laughs> no, that's a really great question, Sarah. Actually, I would say the first thing is you want to have a really nice optimized website. That's mm -hmm. most important because your website's your foundation, right? Yeah. A lot of people will say, oh, well, I do everything through social media yes. or through text messaging, whatever. You, you really need a good website because if you don't, it's the first thing that people do is they go to your website. You know, yes. And then they may, depending on the age group they're in, they look at your social media mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that it's, it's your social, whether it's your social media or it's your website or both, they have to be on par with your branding. So color scheme has got to be consistent. Content's got to be consistent. You know, the aesthetic of how you present your business on there has to be consistent. So I would say those are the main two components that you need to have when it comes to really starting your business and getting effective and really getting out there when it comes to the foundation. And on that website, you know, depending what it is they're offering, there are some very tasteful ones out there. But again, it has to be something that represents who you are, because exactly. you are the business, you know, and what you're doing is what you're doing. But you know, people are going to buy you before they buy your, your business. You know, some people are inclined to overload or put too much up there or, um, you know, if you are kind of entering into something, you know, how would you say that that uh, website needs to kind of look in order to be, we're a new business, we're starting out. It's okay to say you're starting out, right? Everybody think, oh, no, don't tell them we're just starting out. No, it's okay to say that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So you don't want to put misleading information, but you can really focus on, you know, why, not to be braggadocious, but really basically stating what makes you stand out from the pack, right? So you know, whether you're posting services on there that you do, whether you're you know, giving a description about your business, you know, your website has to tell that entire story. Like I was saying before, like I was comparing to a brick and mortar store, you know, like when someone has a sign that says just open. So, you know, you're nervous, you're eager, you're trying to yes. get business, you know what I'm saying? People are walking by and you want to bring people inside, right? Because, you know, you have like a more open sign. So, you know, I'm comparing your website to the brick and mortar location. So as they come in, you want people to feel comfortable. You want people to feel that, you know, they're coming to a, a basically an establishment where they can actually feel comfortable to spend and you know build a rapport with this business so that's that that's some of the really really key components i would say when it comes to just starting out is really focusing on the aesthetic look focusing on you know really being consistent with your branding and on top of that you know having confidence as well. I feel confidence is a big factor because, you know, if you're just starting out and you're trying to figure out, like, oh my goodness, like, you know, I'm, I'm new to the game and I just, I don't know, like, you know, people can sense that uh, like from a mile away, right? So you just have to be extremely confident in your approach when it comes to interactions or outreach or et cetera. Organically honest. Organically honest. There you go. Right. You know, <laughs> I'm going to have to start putting these on t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, give you, and give you a kickback because you're just coming up with these awesome organic <laughs> you know slogans that we can just throw into there well that's what organic is about is being honest you know and if you if it is like you know we're brand new 
you know, yeah. you know, come in and tell us what you think. You know, this is how we want to serve you. But we would love you just to come and have a look. All right. You yeah. know, don't look at I need the buyer straight away. I just want people to come in and engage. So be invitational. Yeah. Kind of have your doors Absolutely. wide open and say, look, just come in and say hello and find out what we're all about. Right. Exactly. And, and be in, in engaging, be upbeat. And also, if you know, if people do make comments that you haven't got this, or you haven't got that, don't take it personally. Document it. OK, maybe we're missing this avenue or maybe we've got too much of this or, or not enough of that. It's like take all those critiques as not as criticism, but as something that do you or do you not have to address? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. Like, you know, like criticism is going to happen. It's going to happen. Like no yeah. matter how you create your website, no matter how you promote your social media, somebody's going to have an issue or they're going to give you feedback that you're not going to like. But you have to be comfortable to take that feedback and, and make sure that you, you know, whether it fuels your success or whether, you know, you take it into consideration to, you know, adapt and make changes if you need to. But I feel that really having that open mind to be, open to receive the feedback is extremely important. If you are secure in your organic organic core of who you are and the why you're Absolutely. doing it and whom you wish to serve, then you are hungry for all that feedback because that's what you're exactly. here for is to be of service to people. And you feel secure in who you are because they're not out attacking who you are. It's just, it's just that maybe you're missing something. And you know, this is, and with everybody, I always say, I'm, I'm putting an anthology together right now, a book on our forgotten children book series. And I've done one a few years ago, just an ebook, but this book is a whole platform and a fundraising for organizations that are supporting children. And there's 15 of us in this book. And, you know, I have a wonderful publisher that's actually going to take the book and put up the proper publishing and get it ready up for that, that she's donating those services because this is a fundraising book. But everything else I've had to, you know, I've done, I've done by instincts or oh, that looks good maybe I should try that and I'm not I haven't got a team I am the team other than my yeah. authors that are contributing and it's yeah. like all along the line should I be should I bring people blah, 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 blah. and it's like we're raising money so we don't have money to put out we're raising money to support these organizations that's the platform I'm coming from and uh, I'm very proud of all the authors that are in there the book is going to come out in in um uh, third week of February. It's a, a love, oh, that's amazing. A, a love contributing to our children and the awareness that we need to be on raising our children. But it's like you are going to second guess, you are going to doubt. And sometimes you just need somebody else to come in from a different avenue. What do you see? Because I'm too entrenched in it. I need a second yeah. or third opinion. And But make sure yeah. the people that you're asking are really actually supportive of you in a way that they're going to give you constructive opinion yeah they're not exactly. there to sabotage you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so exactly. be careful who you ask <laughs> <laughs> no that i can agree with that i can agree with and it's so funny when you talk about the criticism actually because even for you know my own agency when i started organic mindset agency even the whole when i was trying to come up with the name like what made me really come up with the name organic mindset agency. So, you know, I'm really into, you know, healthy living, working out, like, you know, buying organic food and just living a really organic lifestyle in that aspect. And I like to connect with people organically, right? Like when I meet someone, I don't want it to feel forced. I don't want it to feel unauthentic. So organic. And then this goes into my whole branding aspect. You know, when you go to networking events, you go to, you know, whether it's, you know, TED Talks or whatever it is, you, you hear people speak and given some form of value. The term organic comes up over and over uh -huh. and over and over and over again. Uh -huh. You know, organic growth, organic connections, you know, organic everything, right? So that was the first part of the name. And then mindset, it's another term where, you know, it's when I wake up in the mornings, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fitness junkie. So like when I, when I go for a run or I'm going for a bike ride or bench press max, or I'm setting sales goals or, you know, whatever goals it is that I'm setting mindset. So I just float organic mindset. And then also too, it's another word you hear all the time when it comes to networking, yes. when you, when it comes to, you know, interactions with people, Ted talks, et cetera, you mm -hmm. always hear mindset, mindset, you know, whether it's Grant Cardone, you know, Tony mm -hmm. Robbins, mm -hmm. you know, some of the most successful, you know, entrepreneurs in the world could definitely use that word. So, you know, it just kind of flowed organic mindset agency. And I was thinking, even if somebody forgets me a year from now, they're going to remember the lime green and they're going to remember the term organic mindset. And my logo 
I fought with it for a while and I actually figured out what I wanted to do because I, I, like I said, I'm very visionary and it's a tree transforming into a brain. So, you know, and then the well, slogan's growing, your business is all in your mind. So from a branding <laughs> aspect, I want to make sure that everything just flows. And I do the same thing for my clients as well in that aspect. If they need help with branding, they need help with a slogan, they need help with putting something together that's going to, you know, really, really draw the audience in. That's what, that's what we, that's what we really, really focus on doing. I've been in this business nearly 12 years, 10 and a half years with my own network and my logo has changed. The name changed because the name, I started off with PLV Radio, which was Positive Living Vibration, but people didn't get it. Mm -hmm. So I went to Self Discovery Radio. And then, but the mm -hmm. radio, I was now branching off into video and everything else, so I went to media. Um, and then it was like, well, Self Discovery Media, are we discovering media? Uh, are we discovering you? It didn't fit. And But I talk mm -hmm. about wisdom all the time, right? Yeah. Our discovery, our self-discovery into the wisdom that is accessible and within us and around us and through us all the time. And if yeah. and the universe just kept saying, it's got to change, it's got to change. And we said, but you can't change it again. And I, I have to. It has to be self-discovery mm -hmm. wisdom. We talk about self-discovery because that's what it's all about. Your why. What discovery did you make of yourself to put you on this path of your why? Right. And the wisdom is is what I promote all the time, that the wisdom is there. You know, it's in our stillness. It's in our allowing. It's in our downloading of our wisdom that resonates yeah. with our heart in truth, that gives it to our spirit into action for our mind to know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. But yeah. my logo has changed a few times because, funny enough, uh, I have another site called The Orchard of Wisdom. So it's ready for picking all that wisdom. Right. Uh, and I had a tree in 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 my uh, logo but it was a tree that i kind of got off um google and i found somebody else had it and you know but no and so my son-in-law said let's ai design you a tree so now i've got a tree with a microphone in its trunk and all of the leaves are multiple colors which represents my true colors personality and the fact that i'm very yeah. much into color it's a beautiful and, logo uh, Thank you. Thank you. And, and of course, I'm, I've gone into TV now. I'm going to be going on Roco TV. And so, you know, it, it had to represent that. And it's like, I know it would be great. Like, just do it. Perfect. Perfect. Right. I mean, they never had to change that logo. It was absolutely perfect. Just do it. And everybody refers to it all the time. We're not always that lucky to hit on it, at, uh, you know, the first time round. And, you know, mine had yeah. to evolve where this I have I evolved. So, is it okay to change our our logos along the way and kind of have it more representative of who we are as we grow? Because I know it's more ideal to stay one. And I, you know, I love the yeah. tree because the tree, I look at the analogy of the tree is that as we mature and grow in life, we root deeper. Our trunk becomes stronger, but our branches reach out to the wisdom of the universe and flow in the wind without breaking right? Flexible, not breakable. And so becoming that tree is where the wisdom and the knowledge is. So I love the fact yeah. that you put the tree and the brain together because that's oh, exactly what it's about. <laughs> no, I, I really appreciate that because the tree is, is, is something, like you said, from a symbolization point of view, it, yes. it, it, it represents life. It represents growth. It represents longevity. It represents, you know, bringing like the universe together, right? So when you dive really deep into the psychology as to why, you know, yes a tree is viewed the way it is it, it, it's just it's really really deep and you know we can go several different ways with the conversation about well, no, why trees are so that, important um, have you seen judy dench's uh, uh, uh documentary on trees i have not no uh, 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 yeah. bbc um tv did it if you find it uh highly recommended because she talks about the matrix of how the fiber optics from one tree to the other and the roots talk and support one another they don't care if you're mm. an elm or willow or what you are they're they're yeah. communicating with each other whether you've fallen down and died and, and new growth is coming from you whether you stand yeah. thousand feet tall and that's the beauty of it if we could become the orchard and communicate with each other we'd be much stronger as a human race I agree. Absolutely. And that, that's a very, very, very way, good way of putting it. So I love the fact you've gone with the tree and the brain, because, you know, let's honestly, you know, it's if we just rely on the brain, that's full of data and information. Um, exactly. But very often we don't know how to use that data and information if we do not trust the wisdom in order to know what we need to know when we need to know it. So, but yes, I did ask you whether it's, is it OK to change the logo as you evolve uh, or are we kind of setting ourselves back? No, I don't, I don't think so at all. Absolutely. I feel that, you know, as you go through different phases of your business, 
things are going to change. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's a revamping. Like, you know, there's businesses yeah. that, you know, they have change in management, change in ownership. You know, they want to basically create something that is different from the past, but it could be better. You know what I'm saying? So you see logos evolving all the time. Like even sports teams change their logos and they change their color schemes because it's almost like a new beginning. You mm, know, it's like, okay, you know, a new chapter. Absolutely. So I, I feel as long as you do it effectively and it's not something to way out of reach from what you're previously doing, unless you change obviously the name of the business, I feel actually, you know, rebranding is, is really, really effective because, you know, that's, that's a whole different route to go. A lot of people do it at the end of their of their, you know, fiscal year and they do it to launch for the following year because they realize, okay, you know what, when it comes to the marketing point of view, we're going to really, really hit the ground hard running because we want to show that we've rebranded, we've changed, whether it's a new website, new location, et cetera, new products. It really, really, really gives your, you know, customers, audience that, that hands-on approach. I, I, I completely agree. And it, and it shows the evolving, but it's always like with you, organic mindset immediately before anything else. The organic mindset is being true to who you are. What is your mindset? Is it coming from organic or is it coming from an external pressure? So automatically yeah. it, it is that opener with me, self-discovery. Everything yeah. we're doing here, the people I have on, you've already made your discovery of who you are, what you are and what you're here to do. Right. And that's what it's all about, because if we don't know who we are and what we're, you know, who, what we're here to do, what our gift is, what our instrument is, then how do we know whom to serve? So it is all yeah. about that. And then, you know, the self-discovery into our organic mindset, right, uh, yeah. of knowing where we are. And I think that's very, very important in any business that you're starting out. You may be good at what you do, but have you really asked yourself why you're doing it, whom you're doing it for? And are you very organic about the approach or does it just feel like it's a good money maker or a good thing, but you're not that attached to it? Because if you're not that attached to it, you're not going to be successful out of it. Agreed. Absolutely. Couldn't say it any better. What other tidbits do you have for us that we need to know in order to grow? So what you need in order to grow is you know i'm going back to it again it's almost like i'm recycling it again That's is fine. really actually something different actually mm -hmm. i feel that in order to really grow you got to put yourself in situations where you're uncomfortable you oh, always yeah. have to feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. you have to be uncomfortable and you have to be relentless in your approach you have to be relentless in the sense of you know obviously contacting with people networking you have to consistently stay after it because that's the most effective way to grow your business and not only just to grow your business, but to really, really make that push to, you know, your outreach and making sure you're getting out there in front of as many people as possible. And you want to do things you don't normally do because when you get complacent, that's mm -hmm. when, you know, you start to coast, but you want to consistently be uncomfortable. So, you, you know, set goals to yourself and challenge yourself every single day. Like for myself, I, I call them rocks and sprints. So my sprints are tasks that I can accomplish within a seven day window. Rocks are, I would say, my tasks that take a little bit longer. So, for example, like my sprints for the week would be, you know, to have X amount of meetings and to, you know, ideally close X amount of meetings. And then, you know, my rocks would be, okay, as we plan for the next month, what's going to be next? You know what I'm saying? So they're more of what I'm running towards. So, like, I'm sprinting. I get to the rock. The rock gets pushed back. I got to sprint again. I get to the rock. I push it back. So that, that's how I pretty much prepare my days. And I put everything on my phone because I'm in the Apple universe. So I put everything on my phone and, you know, whether it's reminders and I, I mean, I use my CRMs as well, but at the same time, reminders to my phone, make sure I'm reaching out to this person, follow up with this person and consistently making sure that I'm on top of that. So if I look even at my watch, I, okay, I see a notification come through being like, okay, I have to connect with this person or set up a meeting with that person, follow up with this person, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, really being organized there. So I would say making yourself uncomfortable, staying hungry, staying organized and consistently looking to grow and better yourself. That's all I would say. Mm, I completely agree. You know, I mean, for me, it is, it's my Google calendar. Everything goes up there that I need to do. Um, and that uh, I spend, you know, the, the first hour, hour and a half of my day is going through all of my emails, going through all of the social media, going through all of that in preparation, you know, for the show, but making sure all of that has been addressed first. And if I can't get back to it straight away, because it requires a bit of more thought in the email, then I put a tag next to it. I'm going to get back to it a little later when I've got more time. But as far as pushing yourself, you know, uh, I mean, <laughs> when I was first asked to do a podcast, uh, join another network, I didn't even know what podcasting was. And it's like, yeah. 
when she explained it, I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. And I was live and I pressed all the wrong buttons and it was disastrous, but I did it for 13 months and it was very uncomfortable sometimes when either your, your guest dropped or you dropped or something went on because got all retrograde with the internet, but it was such a great learning tool. So even when I started my own, there were not very many other podcast networks to actually draw on. And so it was literally kind of, navigating by braille as they call it you know it's just like feeling your way and like oh yeah. i need to, i need to do this i need to do that i need to evolve this i need to evolve that well now i'm into podcast books i'm into podcast education i'm into mentorship directories they're all part of the main core of the podcasting it's just taking the expertise of the podcast uh, guests that i interview and expanding that knowledge out and so uncomfortable because there's certain areas especially when it comes to tech that I'm not comfortable with but it's just either a delegate or learn and we yeah. actually don't know how capable we are until we actually try something and it may not be brilliant or you may be something you get better at but we just like oh I didn't know I could do that I didn't know I could do all my editing I didn't know I could do all that I do it's the willingness to try and if you're not willing to try and grow, you stagnate, you ferment, and you get left behind. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's when you put your heart into something, you never know your heart and your mind and your soul into something. You will be amazed by what you can actually accomplish in life. And that's one thing as I continue to get older, I realize it's like, you know, there's just certain things that I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. And then, you know, I actually lock in and get it done. And then it's like, oh, wow, you know, yeah. I shocked myself with a lot of things. And and and, that, and that's the beauty of, 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 like I said, challenging yourself and making yourself feel uncomfortable, right? Because you put yourself in positions to learn things. You, you put yourself in position to consistently grow. Like my mother always says to me all the time, she's like, oh, you work so hard. You know, you know, you take time off and rest. I'm like, yeah, I do. And I've, I've honestly really focused on this year is have a little bit more of a balance. But mm -hmm. it's like when I'm locked in and I'm going, it's just I just keep going and going and going. And you know what I mean? It's like. You know, you got to, like I said before, it's, it's a matter of just staying relentless, staying hungry. And you got at the same time, consistently look to grow and find ways to grow and better yourself. That's what I found has been most effective for me. I agree with your mother about the balance. And I also <laughs> have to remind myself of that. And my yeah. daughter has had two grandbabies, which I had to wait until I was 66 to become a grandmother. So I'm going to get and absorb them as much as I possibly can. Absolutely. And so, and of course, if they need me, like, you know, we all got the RSV over Christmas. So one baby ended up in hospital. And I'm there with the other one. And it's, they will always come first. And that is yeah. my kind of time out and time for me with them. But we do have to find that balance because we don't fortify ourselves and we haven't got much energy to give our business. But I'm completely with you. I don't look at this as work. There's certain chores that I have to do that uh, you yeah. know uh, we wish I, somebody else could do that but you just go ahead and do it while listening to music or doing something else right and get it done but it's yeah. setting everything up for what you really love to do and if you really exactly. love to do it it's not work it's your passion it's all. your conviction right and it's it's your reason it's your why for getting up every day if you've got that passion for your business then you're already halfway there now you need to exactly. structure it, align it, make sure the marketing for it, that that same enthusiasm is, is being reached out there with a product that is going to serve other people. Put that passion into process. Exactly. And, and that's exactly how I feel in that aspect is, is just, you know, it, there, there's a certain level of satisfaction and, and, and gratification when it comes to, you know, you set certain goals for yourself. When you hit the one goal, you're like, oh, okay, you know what? Oh, I shocked myself there. And then you, know, you hit another goal. And then, you know, you set certain milestones for yourself. And then as you, you start to really get to those milestones, you really can, you know, figure out, okay, you know what? This is really something that I feel passionate about and you love doing. Because when you love doing what you do, it's not work at no, all. It isn't. It, no, it isn't. It, it's just, you know, it's a hobby, which is, <laughs> you know, when you look at paid work hobby. in your business as a hobby, <laughs> yeah, paid <laughs> hobby, then it then, then you, you just start to, you know, you're almost in your, like, your your element when you're, yeah. when you're working. So I, that's, yeah. that's what I found. I also think it also with your clientele, you know, okay, okay if you've got a gym and you're directing your doing Pilates or this, that maybe, you, maybe you're, uh, your demographic is a younger generation. But, you know, the youngest person I've interviewed was 10. The oldest was 92. The 92-year-old wow. had taken a new lover at 90 and she had her own TV station and she's still going at <laughs> 95. So, wow. you, know, you know, here I am at 69 interviewing a millennial. Do not put in your business 
the age bracket unless you are targeting a certain age with a product for a certain reason then that's different yeah but, but exactly. you know where so many people of my age group i have uh, we've done all the expectations we have the job we have the 2.2 kids on the picket fence we've done all of that i've now retired now i'm doing what i love to do yeah right? now i'm doing what i'm really passionate about and they've taken all the wonderful expertise that they've gathered and they've put it into new businesses so if somebody older comes in it's like oh god you know it's going to be a knitting thing or whatever no there is so much wisdom in those older people and yet things around marketing or tech or sites and things is not their forte perhaps but the content of their information is absolutely priceless and so absolutely you know it, and i think and that's in businesses please do not kind of limit your thinking as so only the age bracket you're going to have because that you're that age because the, you know children have wisdom as well yeah. <laughs> absolutely no that that i could totally agree with but you yeah never that's know. uh that's exactly yeah you, you never, never know, know who you're going to come across right so that's exactly that's, that's... yeah and you know we look at some of the, you know i mean you talked about Tony Robbins, there's Oprah, there's Deepak Chakra, there was Wayne Dreyer, you know, old, older generation. We've got Jay Shetty now. I'm putting Trevor Noah in that bracket. I'd love to interview him. <laughs> He's absolutely fantastic. I mean, one of the most well equilibrium persons uh, that you could ever come across. And, uh, you know, and it's like, I think we are born to what we're meant to do. Uh, and we, in our self-discovery of what that is, it comes through the life experience. But as you said, when you step into something that you know that you have an aptitude for, this is what I can see. This is what I can do. This is my passion. That is one of the greatest gifts you can give to yourself. You're not doing it just because you're good at it and it gives you a paycheck. You're doing it because it's your passion to do. And that, I think, is where the enrichment and the abundance is. Absolutely. I totally couldn't agree with you more. So you deal with people, it doesn't matter if they're solopreneurs or they're big companies. It, does, oh, it doesn't matter even doesn't what, matter. Uh, what their matter. business is. It's, uh, you gain, you listen, you customize. You customize exactly. your service to uh, what the person needs by listening to them, by paying attention to what they need, taking where the strengths are, where the weaknesses are, and where they can yeah. moving forward. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. So, you know, it, it's, it could be a solopreneur or it can be a, you know, a large company. It, it just, you know, the strategies to what they need are based off of, you know, obviously their pain points and, mm -hmm. you know, obviously budget and, 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 you know, things like that. So, you know, we, I wouldn't like to say one size fits all because it's, you know, totally we adapt and we adjust and we customize, adapt, adjust, customize. I know they're almost the same exact word, but they're very, very different. They're pivoting as well. along They're the way, pivoting. right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Adapt, adjust, and customize. So that's that's pretty much what we what we do when it comes to, you know, obviously putting together the right strategies for our clients. And you know, if you are running business, you have to have a marketing budget. Absolutely. You have to have that. So, you know, if somebody comes to you, I've got a business I want to start out, it you know, is it what's the most important thing? And you're saying their site, because that's their bricks and waters so if somebody goes it starts okay, with the site right that's all i can afford right now and then as we grow then i can afford to grow uh in, in my marketing so you can work with people on whatever level they're at and how they grow yeah exactly we can help them grow and like a lot of the time i like to let business owners know to look at you know, obviously purchase marketing services more as an investment as an instead of an expense. Mm -hmm. Because when you really word it in that aspect, then they're like, okay, yeah, no, that's true. It's an investment because you're not, you know, it's not an expense. An expense is going out and, you know, buying a, a new TV. That's that's more, you can look at that as an expense. Okay, maybe you need a TV because you watch a lot of TV or, you know, buying a, you know, pair of shoes or whatever it may be, you know, that could be more of an expense. But when you actually put money into your business, Mm -hmm. that's the investment and you have to look at it that way. And that's, that's something that I've found when it comes to, you know, sales is really identifying these key words that, you know, business owners really understand. So like, you know, looking at it as an investment, as opposed to, you know, an expense really goes a long way in that aspect. Some people are going to open businesses that are bricks and water, right? Some people are going to open businesses that are uh, online service based. All right. Mm -hmm. So whether you are investing in 
the rent or the lease in the building, uh, it's a different form of marketing to get people to know to come to you. If you're online yeah. and you're serving people in this demographic or globally or whatever, it, you're look you're still looking at kind of paying the lease with the marketing, in order yeah. to keep your bricks and mortar on site going. Exactly, exactly, and that's that's a very interesting aspect when you really put it in that way. That that, that makes total sense. We've just got to know it's part of business. It's part of your growth. And yes, yeah. you can reach a certain growth. You know, I'm where I I'm where I am right now. I'm comfortable in the sense that I can manage this. Um, I want to ride this wave at the present moment to know where to go next and then come back to you and go, okay, I'm ready for more growth. Right. So it's okay for people to kind of coast and in that coasting kind of learn a little more about what their clientele, et cetera, or what they need to do. And then when they're ready, I'm now ready for that next influx and then go up to that next level. So you really look at clientele as kind of being long-term people that are going to be with you long-term, not just quick fix. There's your marketing. Bye-bye. But more of people that you're helping along the way that um, are rooting and seeding with you in that growth. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, there are some projects that we do offer that are one-off projects mm -hmm. and, you know, we really pride ourselves in doing a bang up job on it because therefore, you know, we gain the trust, we gain the credibility that therefore they want to come on and, you know, have us do, you know, more long, longer term projects for them. So, you know, it really depends on the client, but yeah, there are some projects we've done that we can do projects that are one-offs, but at the same time, you know, I'm that confident in the services that we offer at the high level of quality that we're able to provide that clients generally will stay on and, you know, work with us for the long run. So that's something that I really, really focus on. Now, we also really focus on the importance of, you know, we incentivize a lot of our services as well. We actually worked in a partnership with a travel uh, company that allows us to give, you know, complimentary hotel savings cards mm -hmm. or people book calls with us. You know, if someone becomes a client, we can give complimentary trips as well. Mm -hmm. So there, there's there's some really nice perks that we've, we've been able to establish at Organic Mindset Agency to, you know, bring clients in. So it's something that we've really been focusing on in terms of, you know, establishing you know, that rapport with, with their clients and, you know, almost to build like almost like a community and stay yeah. connected to the clients as well. So that, that's what I really, really, that's my overall vision of how I want things to go. Another big word, community, right? Yes. You know, I'm, I'm always saying the analogy of the village, the village is only um, as strong as everyone's participation in it. And, you know, when one person's down, the village is there to help them get back up. When one person's celebrating, the village is there to celebrate. But that village is only as strong as, as the coming together. And that's the community. And if we can look at our business community um, as that this is part of the village, this is part of the strength, then, you know, it's when people have a lawyer, an accountant, they don't change them every year unless they're bad. You know, they build up a rapport and a trust. And so when marketing is the same thing. You want to know you've got a marketer that actually understands what your business is all about and where you need to go next. And that's the important thing. So you want somebody just like your accountant, just like your lawyer, that understands you, where you need to go, who can even go, hey, I've seen where you're going right now. Are you ready for that next level? When maybe they don't exactly. even realize they're ready for it. So yeah. it is that kind of partnership, something that is there to help you when needed not an if but when needed as to what level that is needing going up same way you would trust the accountant or the, exactly. or the lawyer so and I'm, I'm dead serious folks your marketing is that important because okay yeah and we're we've just been featured on tv and with this and that that's for the moment that's for yeah. the moment a great coup and you can milk that but what yeah. about tomorrow <laughs> exactly exactly right that, and that's important <laughs> A lot of people just like they overlook that as well, right? Where they're like, okay, they think, like you said, like, you know, whether they're featured on TV or featured on, you know, a podcast, like oh, I just was today. And, you know, then they think that's just more than enough they need to do. But, you know, you got to, like I said, you got to stay consistent. Consistency is key. Well, I always say to people that, you know, that, uh, that I do, I said, make sure on your site that you do actually have uh, in kind of the media thing of the podcasts that you've done. And let people go in and choose which one or listen to them because of the game that is your calling card. They listen to the podcast. They like what you have to say. They have a resonance with you. Yeah, I really like what they're, who they are because I've heard them and I now want yeah. to reach out. So some people may need a bit more of that information than rather than just what's on the site. And your podcast is that calling card, is that invitation. Use it. That's exactly. what it's for.
right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you there. What do you feel of people doing podcasts themselves in their business on their sites? I think it's great. I think it's just it just really comes down to how they market it, how they execute it as well. Because like, you know, whether they're interviewing other business owners in the same industry or they're interviewing, you know, clients that they've had in the past and their experiences they have with their business, I, I, I think it's really effective, but they have to do it the right way. Yeah. And I feel that, if they don't do it the right way and it's not effective, then it, it, it could be a disaster. But if they do it the right way in terms of, you know, maybe building a community of, you know, other business owners in the same industry, talking about, you know, the trials and tribulations, you know, trends, how how the how their industry is evolving, I feel it could be very, very, very effective. So that's actually really interesting you said that because I mean there is definitely a lane for business owners to have, you know, podcasts that are very successful. And that's building that community again. And, you know, and a lot of people, of course, use things like YouTubes where they put up tip bit videos, uh, which is also another great thing. People can come in, they can hear what you're talking in the tip bit. All of these type of things are an invitation in, an invitation yeah, absolutely. in, right? And so it's really, really important. But as you said, make it engaging, make it in a way that people, doesn't they have to be flash and dash and all of that. It's got to be engaging where people have got you. And, you know, they, they oh, I want to hear more. I want to hear more. Exactly. So, yeah. so, okay, we've talked about all of this. And um, when people want to reach out and go, look, I'm starting a business or I've been in business for a long time. I feel rather mm -hmm. stagnant. I know I need to influx or I know I need to pivot. Um, it doesn't matter where the people are from, right? I know that you're in particular cities, but does it matter where they're from? Can you work virtually with everyone? Where from. I, anybody. They could be in, you know, in Vancouver. They can be in you know, Chicago, they can be in Sydney, Australia, they can be in Paris, France, it really doesn't matter. Right. And are there yeah. different rules in different countries as far as marketing is concerned? Or is it, is it uh, it's just kind of you researching whatever they're from and kind of what the trend is? Pretty much effectively. Yeah, pretty much. Right. Right. Yeah. And again, no one size fits all. The, the the gift of what you're doing is listening to learn what they need to customize what they need at the level they're at and how to prepare them for the growth that is going to come, right? And it's having somebody long-term by your side that you, know, you can pick up the phone and or drop you an email and go, okay, <laughs> time for growth or we've got too yeah. much growth right now. How do we handle it, right? So Exactly, yeah. No, definitely. So yeah, the easiest way to get in contact with me is via, uh, via email. And that's, you know, Kenny at organic dash mindset.com. And, you know, the, our general inbox is info at organic dash mindset.co. So dot com is for to get in contact directly with me. The general inbox is info at organic dash mindset.co. And of course, and, the site is organic dash mindset.com. Correct. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, but your Instagram is organic mindset uh, gen? Agency. agency 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 okay yeah. why does organic media? yeah follow <laughs> us exactly on organic mindset agency so that's 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 the actual uh, Instagram so another way to get in contact is via WhatsApp so area code 302-204-0226 repeat one more time 302-204-0226 another easy way to get in contact and you know Whichever way, whichever way you're comfortable with. I mean, that's the thing. Start exactly. the conversation. Start the conversation. Absolutely. You Start may have conversation. absolutely no. You've maybe you think I need this, and after the conversation, okay, all right, no, I need something totally different, <laughs> and you work with them where they're at in preparing them with where they need to go. Exactly. Because that's, you yeah, listen, that's, that's you important. care, and 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 honor who they are, and in their all organic selves as well. So, yeah. Adapt, adjust, customize. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. That's what it's all about. You know, I think, you know, the most important thing in life is the, in any form of business, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are. We want to know that we are being spoken with, not to, right? Somebody is listening to mm -hmm. us and responding to us, not just thinking, well, how can I pitch this? How can I pitch that? But more like yeah. how this will serve you. Uh, this is how I see the envisioning of it. And it. It is a different uh, verbiage of how we how we do it. And people want to know you are giving your time because you do care, because you are invested in their success and that you're not exactly. just a dollar sign and next. People are so tired of that. 
they really exactly. want to know you care and that you've got the customer service. So obviously with the organic mindset, they can really uh, get that kind of treatment where they are listened to, you care, and you're going to put them in the right direction. 1,000%. Thank you so much for sharing with us here today. So much knowledge being shared. So many wonderful tidbits. Um, anybody Thank out you. there with any form of business, whether you're a solopreneur starting out, really needing to revamp or pivot, <clears throat> it doesn't matter who or what, where you are. Maybe you just need that phone call to find out how can they help you and where do you need to go next? Because we all need help, folks. Do not think you can do it all on your own. Uh, they're experts for a reason and you need their expertise so you can be continue to be an expert in your field. So please do reach out to Kenny, okay? And uh, start the conversation. Perfect. Thank you so much. Until next Absolutely. time, folks, stay organic. Bye for now. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. We hope that you enjoyed the show. There are so many more for you here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. Just go to the podcast tag at the top there and you will see all the many genres and all 3,000 shows ready for your listening. We are here to serve you, to help you on your journey of life. And we know that through inspiration, it begets invitation. We are supported by you, the listeners, and those that we interview. Anything that you can spare us in donation would be greatly accepted. And we do hope that you enjoy the next show.